Hi guys, in this video we're going to be thinking about energy and what we have learnt so far. Then we'll talk about kinetic energy and rearranging the equation for kinetic energy. And then we'll finish with a summary. So what have we learnt so far about energy? One of the things we learnt is that energy can be stored in various types of energy store. For example, energy might be stored in the gravitational potential store, or the elastic potential store, or the nuclear energy store, or for example the magnetic energy store. In this video, we're going to discuss some of the kinetic energy stores in more detail. The other thing that we need to remember is that we have seen the principle of conservation of energy. And the principle of conservation of energy was that energy can be transferred usefully, stored or dissipated, but importantly, energy can never be created or destroyed. And now that we have those two concepts under our belt, we're going to look at some real life examples of the conservation of energy. And one last thing that we need to mention is that so far we've only looked qualitatively at energy transfers. But now we need to start putting numbers on things. We need to introduce a unit for the measurement of energy. And the unit we introduce is the joules. So just like how we measure length in meters, we will measure the amount of energy in joules. Now let's properly introduce the concept of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, we have said, is the energy associated with the motion of an object. And we imagine that something might have more energy if it's moving fast or less energy if it's moving slowly. So we think that kinetic energy must therefore be related to the speed of the moving object. So what we're saying is that if this car was moving faster, we would expect it to have more kinetic energy. Moving slower, we'd expect it to have less kinetic energy. So that's the qualitative part dealt with. But what we really need to do is put some numbers on these things. We want the exact relationship of how kinetic energy is related to speed. And it turns out that the kinetic energy depends on the square of the speed. And as well as depending on the speed squared, the kinetic energy also depends on the mass. I'm now going to write down the full formula for the kinetic energy. Now we're going to represent the kinetic energy with a symbol that is a capital E with a little k. And it turns out that this energy is equal to one half multiplied by the mass multiplied by V squared, where the symbol V is being used to represent the speed or the velocity. So altogether that's the kinetic energy is equal to a half times the mass times the speed squared. And as for the units in this equation, the energy is measured in joules, the mass is measured in kilogram, and the velocity is measured in meters per second. And because this equation is so important, we will put a box around it. Now let's try to use this equation in an example. In our example, what is the kinetic energy of a car with a mass of 3,000 kilograms traveling at a speed of 40 meters per second. The first step is to write out the relevant equation. Now the thing that we've been asked to find out is the kinetic energy. So let's write down the equation for the kinetic energy. We have that EK for the kinetic energy is equal to one half multiplied by the mass multiplied by the speed squared. The second step to calculating the kinetic energy is to check that the mass and the velocity are in the correct units. Well, the mass has been given as 3000 kilograms, which is already the correct units, and the velocity has been given as 40 meters per second, which is also the correct units. Now that we know that our quantities are in the correct units, we can substitute them into our equation. So the kinetic energy is equal to a half multiplied by 3000 kilograms and then multiplied by 40 squared. So times 40 and then times 40 again. And the final step is simply to use a calculator to compute this answer. And in my calculator, I found that the answer was 2,400,000 joules. Now let's learn how to rearrange the kinetic energy equation. Using a formula triangle, the kinetic energy equation can be rearranged to determine either the mass or speed of the object if we know the kinetic energy. 
Here's how the formula triangle works. We put the kinetic energy at the top because it's the product of all the other things in the equation. And then in the bottom, we put the thing that the kinetic energy was equal to, which is a half multiplied by the mass multiplied by the speed squared. Here's how the formula triangle works. We imagine that this line in the middle is like a dividing line. And then if we want to find out what the equation is for any one of the quantities we're interested in, we just imagine putting our thumb over that quantity and seeing what the triangle says. So for example, if I wanted to find out the value of the mass, then I would imagine covering up the mass with my thumb and reading off what's left. And what's left is the kinetic energy divided by a half and divided by the velocity or the speed squared. On the other hand, if we wanted to find out what the value of the velocity squared was, then we would just read off the rest of the triangle, which says the kinetic energy divided by a half and divided by m. So that is v squared is equal to the kinetic energy divided by a half m. Let's now take a look at an example where we have to use this rearranged version of the kinetic energy equation. In our example, we're told that a frisbee has a mass of 200 grams and has a kinetic energy of 19.6 joules. And in this case, we're asked to find out what its speed is. The first step is going to be to write out the relevant equation. And the kinetic energy equation says that the kinetic energy EK is equal to one half multiplied by m multiplied by the speed squared. The second step is to rearrange this equation using a formula triangle. We write EK at the top and a half mv squared on the bottom. Now we have been asked to find the velocity of the frisbee, so we should rearrange for v squared, which leaves ek divided by a half m. So that's the speed squared is equal to ek divided by a half m. The next step to use this equation properly is to make sure that the units are correct. Now unfortunately the mass has been given in grams, but we need the mass in kilograms. And we know that to get from grams to kilograms, we need to divide by 1000. So we get 0 0.2 kilograms. The kinetic energy, however, being given in joules is already in the correct units. Now that our values have the correct units, we can insert them into our equation for the speed squared. So that's 19.6 divided by 1 half of 0 0.2. And finally, putting this into a calculator, we get that V squared is equal to 196, which means that V is equal to the square root of 196. And the square root of 196 is 14. And since we made sure that the units of mass and energy were given correctly, we know that the units of velocity here are going to be meters per second. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE Physics and Combined Science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.